Hey, Mom, Hi. what's up? Uh, I need your advice on some stuff. Our producers have come up with a number of different ideas, and like you're a good judge of this kind of stuff. I'm not sure if it like will fly. So, um, okay. So the first idea is you shoes, you lose. I conduct an interview on an ice rink barefoot with a guest, and the first person to put on shoes loses. I'd say with your circulation problem, it's probably not a wise idea. How wise? I don't have circulation problems. Wait, your blood's flowing the wrong way, baby. All right. Okay. Yes, I, I sometimes wear compression really, socks. Okay. I mean, you're getting a frostbite. I don't know how much you value your toes, but you know, you get really cold. You get gangrene and shit. What about this one? Okay, it's called hummus, a fight song. We eat really good hummus, and instead of saying mm, we we hum the Canadian national anthem. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right, foul shots. I ask trivia questions to a guest. If they get it wrong, we take a really gross shot of like fish water, bath water, or something. We get sick. Okay, I don't like that one, though. No. And then finally, okay, this is this is one um, you might like. It's called Questionable Call. It's where I call a member of my family and pitch them ridiculous ideas and record their responses. Oh, my God. Um, yeah, is that what's happening now? <laughs> it is. <laughs>
including the selling of Babe Ruth to the Yankees, trading Drew Bledsoe to the Bills, and the putting down of Paul Revere's horse. A little American history for you. The Cleveland Browns lost their much-anticipated season opener and debut of star wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr. 43-13 to the Tennessee Titans. During the game, OBJ wore what appeared to be a $350,000 Richard Mille. I mean, I, okay, first of all, no one knew how to say this watch's name, all right? But we looked it up, and it's French, so it's a watch. Which, if you look closely, you could see it was indeed time for the Browns to panic. Now, also, I, I heard, by the way, I'm talking to Mike right now, who's uh, on the camera over here. <laughs> Not just a ghost, uh, which is also probably here. Um, people named their kid Baker. Like, I mean, a great idea, but just talk to a four-year-old Johnny Manziel to know that that's not a good idea. Canadian team tennis sensation Bianca Andreescu won her first ever Grand Slam, defeating Serena Williams at the U.S. Open, and then apologized to Serena and the fans for winning. Now, apologizing for winning is the most Canadian thing since Justin Trudeau wrapped himself in a Hudson Bay blanket and rode a moose to RBC to withdraw a mounty hat full of toonies. What? That didn't happen. Since, you know, Tim Hortons and Gilda Radner and Martin Short crushed a case of Molson's at the Nova Scotia ice fishing finals. Julie, we're in America. All right, well, what, maybe this one. Tim Hortons. Since Tim Hortons gave out free maple donuts and hot chocolate to a group of hockey moms on Boxing Day. Please move on. All right, <laughs> we'll go back to America. This is the second time in two years Serena Williams has lost to a teenager in the final. Well, the good news, Serena, now you know what it's like to play Fortnite professionally. <laughs> And of course, we cannot go anywhere without talking about the New York Jets. They blew a 16-point lead only to lose to the Buffalo Bills by one. So they're already in mid-season form, baby. Hey. All right, that's it for the headlines. Still to come, I'm dancing with Tom Bergeron. Spicy. Don't miss it. This is Call It A Night. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> Folks, welcome on back to Call Tonight. I'm Julie Stewart-Binks. This is Mike Lockyer, my cabana boy. Yep. Also was on the camera yep. in the A block. Then I got promoted yes. to here. Everyone's wearing a lot of hats on this show, all right? We, you were also painting the set. I was painting yeah. the set, but also, so were you. And let yes, me say. You know, and also, so was everyone. So, and also, so was everyone. Okay, guys, so you know for the show, our team pours over hundreds of sports news stories, content from all over the world. We find things we love, some things we hate, and others that we just can't make heads or tails of. So for the things that we can't quite call, we've developed a segment called Official Review. So official. It's very official. So the San Diego Padres, they got a little spicy with Boston fans who made their way to Padres Petco Park. Roll the clip. I love this. Don't give anything away. Right, so it's yeah. like super Boston scene. Oh, Here in a little Sweet Caroline classic. It's they're an away so game. excited. They're like San Diego Padre fans are so nice. They're so nice. God, it's just they're just so comforting and welcoming. Like I feel like Boston fans expect the red carpet to be rolled out. Well, and I don't. I mean, for well, good reason. And guess what happens? Well, I'll tell you. Boom. Boom. Rick roll. Rick roll. Rick roll. Yeah. And they were shocked. Yeah, the groan is so loud, and that kind of bothers me. You know that? As an away fan, okay. when you're at an away game, you gotta be on your toes. You gotta have your head on a swivel. You gotta have your head on a swivel. You never know when you're gonna get rickrolled. Exa you, you never know, know when you're gonna get rickrolled. Fact, I just found out what rickrolling was like three hours ago. You did? So, yeah, like I, How? I don't, I don't own a computer or apparently like, not uh, a history. Bar it's slower up there in Canada. Search. Yeah, yeah, it's a little, you know. We uh, some we, maple syrup. We just we just got uh, <laughs> we you? just got Star Wars. Just got it. The first one. Oh, you're gonna love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna <laughs> love wait. it. Okay, next up from a small town in Spain, locals did their best Indiana Jones impressions. Mm. 
This is the running of the balls. Running of the balls. Seems a little grammatically incorrect as there is only one ball, and it's big, baby. That's a big ball. It used to be 440 pounds, which seems like a wildly bad idea. Why did it, was someone like, no, this needs to be real. Or this like, needs to be a boulder. We need to kill people. Yeah, <laughs> there uh, needs to be fear on the street. Yeah, and I, someone got a, a, was in a coma, really bad injury, so the mayor was like, all right, we're gonna stop this, we're not gonna stop for real. We're gonna get a 65 pound ball, uh, and then he got knocked over and, and broke his collarbone, so. Um, kind of more dangerous than running of the bulls. Yeah, I mean, what, Josh Norman leapt over a bull? He, yeah. he was running in it, he's fine. I'd like to see him in this running of the bulls. Uh, official review, Nick Foles probably shouldn't do that. No, no, yeah. but I was thinking Nick Foles should join up with this mayor. Maybe they could have a nice little vacay, drinking yeah. some Malbec in Spain, I mean, hanging out. Only with one hand though, cause like the True, color. True, well it would be, yeah, yeah it would like, be it yeah. would be this, you know. Well. Up next, LeBron <laughs> James has a new super fan and he's not in LA, definitely not in Cleveland. He's in Serbia. You know. You know, lots all of- All places. LeBron fans. And so, okay, so look at this. He's getting his hair cut. Yeah, this, this stresses me out. This stresses me Why? out big time. Uh, Cause I don't like, I don't like this part when he's dropping the razor blade. Oh yeah! And then he goes to play defense on a guy, and he gets posterized, and then he, he goes keeps back. Keeps getting posterized. <laughs> Why do this? I get so anxious with haircuts. LeBron's hairline looks like it's receding in this, by the way. I was wondering, do you think LeBron likes this haircut or not? Is he, he's seeing his hairline in reverse. You know what I mean? It kind of like. I think he likes it because LeBron James likes. Everything LeBron James. Himself, yeah, he likes it. himself. Yep. He'd be a great teammate for him. Um, this, yeah, right? be great. He'd yeah. be passing the ball to himself, kind of, like in a way. You just got to play this way. Yeah, like he's looking yeah. at himself. Yeah. Yeah. That's, While they run down I, I the mean, court. Getting, getting, yeah, it's like getting a tattoo on the back of your neck. Like, you don't know if it's good. That's right? true. I can't imagine what that looks like grown in. Uh, oh. It's like Teen Wolf LeBron James. I don't know if I would like that. Might be a little bit better. Yeah. All right, finally. Uh, you gotta watch this, also LA based. Sign Spinner is a professional. You see these guys on the street spinning the signs, but you don't see this. Yeah, that's for real. That dude is next level. He is insane. You know they got, they got a competitive cornhole now? I hope that they have competitive sign spinning soon. Yeah, this guy's like. Why is that not like on he's TV? been to like sign spinning school. Yeah, he what? He could be a good mascot. Like, where do you go from here? Honestly, I think the Dolphins could use him to get fans in the stands. But they could probably use him on the field. They could know? use him on the field to tell him where the first down like, is. To like do anything. Just be like, go this way. Yeah. Go. Hold on. Go this way. Yeah. God that's, dang. Man. All right, we figured it out. Yeah, we solved it. Okay, folks, that's it for this edition of Official Review. We have got a lot more great stuff coming up on Call It A Night. Tom Bergeron. I got a little. Dancing with him, you don't want to miss it. Next. Welcome on back to Call It A Night. We are rocking and rolling on this beautiful Tuesday. And this past Saturday, we saw an upset for the ages on the court. And I'll tell you why it was a good thing for some. But first, I sat down with the host of ABC's Dancing with the Stars, Tom Bergeron, to talk about life, sports, and put my best foot forward for a future on the floor. Check it out. All right, well, we're honored to be joined by American TV legend. Oh, yes. Host of Dancing with the Stars, <laughs> good. my good friend, Tom Bergeron. That's just like I paid you to say <laughs> yes. it. Hey, you are a legend. You've been on literally every show that anyone has basically watched Dancing with the Stars, right. 28 yeah, seasons. Yeah, the 28th season premieres on the 16th. Yeah. How does that feel? Uh, amazing in that when it premiered back in 2005, I knew it would be fun, mm -hmm. but I thought at best we'd be on like every summer. So to have been able to do it this long at this level has been one of the great pleasant surprises of my career. Some former athletes, right. NFL All-Pro Ray Lewis yep. and former NBA star Lamar Odom. Right. What excites you about seeing these guys now try out their dancing moves? Well, the history of the show, I mean, we have a, a almost a synergistic relationship mm -hmm. with the NFL going back to Emmett winning season three, Emmett Smith. 
and athletes have been among the more dependable contenders in the in the 13 plus years that we've done it. I think because they're used to being coached. Right. They they have a sense of what their body is doing in in space. You know, uh, not as much ego as maybe some other performers who have more yes people around them all the time. Right. Um, so yeah, it's been a great, real surprise to me that, that you know this has been like such a great uh, NFL stopping ground. Is there any weakness that they carry with them, having already sort of competed in something like similar? I forget who it was that said there was one NFL player after they did a quick step and he was just wheezing next to me while he was waiting for the judges and I said, are you all right? He goes, we don't run 90 second plays in the NFL. <laughs> so, uh, so I think sometimes the intensity surprises yes. even athletes. It's, it's sort of like boxing in a sense, okay. in that it's a mental and physical uh, thing to do. You have to have the physicality to be able to dance it, but you also have to have the mental capacity to remember all the steps and mm -hmm. where you are in the music and how your partner's doing and what you're getting from them. And so there's a lot to, a lot to be wrestling right. with. Yeah. Like they've remembered plays, yeah. but this is a little bit different when you have to remember like the quick step and yeah. the Yankee polka and all these Yeah, exactly. Things yeah, the and... Yankee polka? Yeah. Is yeah, that I, a thing? I know a little bit about ballroom dancing. Is that an actual ballroom? It I've is. never Yankee heard polka? the Yankee polka. Do you know any yes. Yankee polka moves? Because I'm do. not convinced. Yeah, it's, uh, Let I mean, Let me see okay. some Yankee polka. Right. Well, okay, so say I have my partner. It's almost like a shuffle, like this. It looks like you're being held up. It looks like somebody well, is. I guess like I don't. I forget like, where I put my hands on like, someone. It seriously you know? looks like you're outside a 7-Eleven and somebody is trying to stop you. And that might be the way I oh, would get away, look. right? Okay, I'll just yeah, do the Yankee yeah. polka to get Yankee, away from them. I have never heard that dance. Yeah. Ever. Okay. So I was just trying to throw out some of my um, background in ballroom right. dancing. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I think that says it all, don't you, boys yeah, and girls? I think, yeah. I think that worked. But when you look at athletes, they've had to. They go through an element of performance. As a host, there's a similarity there as well. When you get ready for that red light to go on, mm. what kind of aspects of performance, of athletics, do you find that you maybe carry, carry I think, over? Well, I think uh, an important uh, connection and, and corollary is being in the moment, being present. Uh, when we do a dress rehearsal, I usually have a little time between the dress rehearsal and the live show usually an hour or so. And about 20 minutes of that hour, I'll meditate. I've been doing TM right. meditation yeah. forever. And, uh, and it's all to keep me in the moment, keep me focused. And I would imagine any athlete worth his or her salt would tell you, you can't be on the field thinking about what you did last night or what you might do tomorrow. You've got to be there then. And so that's really the key for me, um, is when I go on that stage, I want to be aware of what everything is happening and right. how to respond to it as sort of the, you know, Aaron and I are sort of the ringmasters of it and mm -hmm. yeah, how, much, how much do you interject, how much do you hang back, that type of thing. We'll wrap up soon, but just, we're going to be doing a lot of comedy with sports. Yep. How, how important do you think comedy is within sports? Like we see a lot of, we see a lot of serious stories, we yeah. see a lot of emotional stories, but what do you like about that vehicle? Look, I think life has comedy in it, whether you acknowledge it or not. And, and I, I would imagine, like in any other profession, the athletes who embrace the potential humor of what they're going to be doing while taking it seriously at the same time in terms of training yeah. and execution, they're probably healthier for it. Right. And, and God knows, you know, as the guy who hosted a video show for 15 years, you got to have plenty of sports bloopers every week that you, you can do. weave oh, in. Oh, there's, there's a ton yeah. of lot. Well, yeah. that's what people like. It's fun. It's different. It's and, human. Uh, it's human. It's human. Right. And, and speaking of that, I mean, the whole reason why we're here, I buttered you up to this point, yes. is the fact that um, I want to show you my moves for Dancing with the Stars season 29. Well, you kid, you kind of well, well, did the, mean, what was the Yankee polka. The Yankee what was that? polka, that was that's that not was not even a thing. <laughs> not even a thing. It is. It is she definitely it a up. thing. But Yankee this polka. is something I've prepared myself, and I mentioned. Okay, so I did a ballroom dancing class in college. Okay. Mandatory. All right. That's what you get with a physical and health education degree uh -huh. in Canada. Yeah. And then I was an ice dancer too. So I've worked on something knowing my very good background in dancing. All right, but you're gonna do this by yourself? I'm gonna do who's, this. Who's that gentleman <laughs> with the camera right there? That's Dan, Dan our writer. Come here, Dan. 
You got to dance, uh, dance with Julie. I, I, I don't right. know if Dan's uh, prepared to dance no, like he wasn't. I dance. No, he had no idea we were going to do this. So, because <laughs> I have to judge this, right? So yeah, why don't yeah. you and let her lead because she knows okay. what she's doing. I got to lead, but you have to do what I'm going to do. Okay. All right, I'll be down here just watching. All right, just make sure. Uh, yeah. And okay. Is there a style we're going to see here? Um. I'm gonna let you guess what kind of oh, style we're doing and feel the... free to do any kind of play-by-play -play on what we're gonna okay, do, okay? Okay, all right. All right, so Dan, follow me, okay? Because I like to lead, Okay. all right? <laughs> Maestro, cue the music. Oh, yeah. There we go. There we go. <laughs> my, only, my only comment is I wish I was still hosting America's Funniest Home Video. So this is for a different show. Yeah, there we yeah, are, right? Yeah. Okay. But definitely yeah. worthy of Thank being you, on Dan. television. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, all right. Well, wow. uh, there we have that it. Those are, uh, those are some of the moves I usually bring out at weddings and, yeah. and at the club. Yeah. Yeah. So I thought yeah. I'd let everyone wow. see them. Wow. Uh, but, Tom, thank you so much for being here. Always a pleasure, Jules. Um, great it to is, see you. It is great to see you. And, of course, everyone can see you on season 28 of Dancing yep. with the Stars. Starting September 16th, uh, Monday nights on ABC. Welcome back. We're just about to call it a night. But first, I've got something I want to say about the U.S. Open women's final. So much so that it is a topic in tonight's segment that we call Binks Thinks. Now, on Saturday, 19-year-old Canadian tennis star Bianca Andreescu won her first Grand Slam title, beating tennis legend Serena Williams to win the U.S. Open. Unsurprisingly, Andreescu was not the favorite, as the U.S. crowd was pulling to see their native daughter win her record-tying 24th Grand Slam. Even Andreescu, after the match, rather than basking in victory, like a true Canadian, apologized to the crowd for beating Serena. But as a Canadian myself... I wish he hadn't. Sure, Canadians are nice. I mean, maybe not me, but everyone else is. But we also have an inferiority complex from years of being America's hat. But things are starting to change. Just two months ago, the Toronto Raptors won the NBA Finals, and it's been truly a banner year for Canada. And rather than apologizing to American crowds, we should be thanking them. The U.S. has long set the bar high for Canada, and if there's one thing we still have yet to learn, it's how to accept our greatness. Now, I'm not saying we're beginning a dynasty. All I'm saying is that we've learned, if we've learned anything from watching these great athletes over the years, it's that we appreciate what you've done for us as Americans. And from now on, when you call us America's hat, we can only assume it's because we're on top right now. All right, thank you guys all for watching. Our debut episode of Call It A Night will be back on Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. But before we wrap things up today, I just wanted to give a special thanks to my late manager, John Ferreter, who suddenly passed away with acute pancreatitis just days after completing this deal for me to host my own show, a dream job. John was an incredible force. He always believed in me, even in some of my darkest days, which isn't something that you find in this industry. And it's the reason why I'm working in the U.S. He was a caring, fiercely loyal individual who I regularly called a pit bull. John, I'm forever grateful for everything you did for me, and I plan to carry your spirit with me on this journey. Thank you for watching. Now, let's call it a night.